They are some of the most unusual aircraft of the past 80 years or so, responsible for sightings of UFOs across the United States and became the most expensive plane ever built, and all from the principle that they were the most aerodynamic of any plane design. And yet they fell into obscurity for almost 30 years. This is the story of the flying wing. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Check out this year's Black Friday deal at the end of the video. Although they might look futuristic, the flying wing design has actually been around for over a hundred years and was originally inspired by the way birds fly. Technically they are called tailless aircraft and in their truest form have no fuselage, no vertical or horizontal stabilizers other than the main wing. So all the crew, fuel tanks, payload and associated equipment are all within the main wing section itself. The point of a flying wing is that they have the most aerodynamically efficient design of any fixed wing aircraft, with the least amount of drag because there are no other control surfaces to induce drag, and as such they could fly faster subsonically, further and carry greater load than a conventional aircraft of the same engine power. However, without a vertical stabilizer they are inherently unstable. Some delta wing aircraft are also called flying wings like the Concorde or the Dassault Mirage because they have no horizontal stabilizer but they do have a vertical stabilizer and rudder. Whilst the inspiration for flying wings originally came from birds, when people tried to copy the shape of a bird it was found that the craft they made were very unstable. The Wright brothers tried this out on gliders and had the same problem. It was only after thousands of wind tunnel tests that they discovered that using a vertical stabilizer made the gliders controllable and able to turn. And in 1903 they made their first controlled flight in the Wright Flyer and as such vertical stabilizers became a part of aircraft design. So if flying wings were so unstable how did they make them fly? Well the early innovators like J.W. Dunn around 1910 found that if the leading edge of the wing was swept back and they reduced the angle of incidence, the outer part of the wing would act like a normal vertical stabilizer. However this creates more drag and makes the wing more inefficient. Further work with ailerons and split ailerons at the end of the wings found that they could act like a rudder and giving the wings a twist near the tips could also make the craft more stable. In the 1920s and 30s work on advanced wing aerodynamics by Ludwig Prandt and experiments with gliders by the Horton brothers in Germany showed that by changing the shape of the wing over its length, now known as a bell shaped lift distribution, drag could be minimized for a given weight and this made the wings more stable and efficient. This led to aircraft like the Horton HO229 which were designed in response to Hermann Goering's 1943 call for a light bomber for the Luftwaffe that could carry 1000 kilograms of bombs up to 1000 kilometers at up to 1000 kilometers per hour. Using a true flying wing it was the only design to come close to the design goals and the first flying wing to use jet engines. Meanwhile in the US Jack Northrop who had been fascinated by how birds flew since he was a boy, was also interested in all wing designs and created the X216H prototype in 1929. Northrop continued his research into larger true flying wings and in 1939 produced the N1M which would prove his theories and lead to the full size B35. During the war the Army Air Corps issued a contract for a prototype heavy bomber that could fly from the US to Germany and back again in case Britain fell and the US was no longer able to gain access to British air bases. Initially the contract was issued to Boeing and Consolidated Aircraft Company but later extended to Northrop due to the interest in the flying wing concept. Initially the B-35 used four Pratt & Whitney engines with large contra-rotating propellers which were supplied by the Army Air Force. These were powerful but proved very problematic. As no one in the Air Force would take responsibility for the engine problems, Northrop decided to switch to single 
propellers, but this then also reduced the power greatly. So in the end, they switched to using eight newly developed Allison J35 jet engines, and the two jet converted airframes were redesignated the YB49. More tests were performed and things were looking very good, but an issue was found when they were tested on a trial bombing run. The aircraft took a long time to settle into stable flight for the run and would drift from left to right and back again and have to be corrected by the pilot until it settled down. But this was enough to cause problems with the Norden bomb aiming site, which needed a very stable platform to work correctly. This was one of the side effects of not having a vertical stabilizer and the flying wing's natural tendency to be unstable. Though when the autopilot was upgraded to automate the yaw control as well, much of the drifting issue was resolved. Although the YB-49 was more efficient than the competing aircraft like the Boeing B-47, the thickness of the YB-49's wing reduced its speed and meant that it couldn't fly supersonically. That and the eight new jets used more fuel than the propeller engines, and this reduced its range too. During this time, it was thought by the top brass, and in particular people like General Curtis LeMay, that thin wing jets were more suitable for supersonic flight, and that speed to take the enemy by surprise was more important than range. But in the end, technical issues, two crashes, plus the politics of the Air Force contracting system and lobbying by Convair brought about the cancellation of the B-35 and the YB-49. However, Jack Northrop believed it was a conspiracy by Convair to remove him and his company from the competition because he refused to merge his company with Convair after it was suggested as the only way to proceed by the Secretary of the Air Force, Stuart Symington. Shortly afterwards, Symington left the government and became the president of Convair further convincing Jack Northrop that Symington had been working for Convair all along. Afterwards, the remaining B-35 and B-49s were cut up for scrap, and Jack Northrop was so disgusted with the way he'd been treated by the Air Force, he resigned from his own company and left the aviation business. For years afterwards, the flying wing concept was thought to have been a dead end in the history of aviation, until the 1970s when interest in stealth technology to combat radar detection turned to the flying wing. In the 1940s, it had been noted that the flying wing had a much lower radar signature compared to conventional aircraft, especially from the side aspect due to the lack of a vertical stabilizer. In 1981, Northrop was selected over Lockheed to build the ATB or Advanced Technology Bomber with the designation of B-2. This was to be a low-level terrain-following bomber that would use stealth technology and the flying wing design to operate vital penetration missions deep into enemy territory to knock out high-value targets without being detected. With the new radar-absorbing paint and the flying wing design, the radar signature from the 52-meter wingspan B-2 was the same as that of a pigeon. By this time, computer-controlled fly-by-wire systems could fly the unstable design far better than any pilot could do back in the 1940s, and advances in engine exhaust shrouding could hide most of the heat signature from the infrared trackers. But soon, the huge amount of research that was required into developing both the airframe and stealth technologies pushed up the cost of a program to dramatic levels. The ongoing maintenance was also going to be hugely expensive, requiring 119 hours of maintenance for each hour of flight, and including special air-conditioned hangars to preserve the stealth coatings. By 1997, the average cost of each plane, including R&D, building and testing, was about $2.1 billion. Although 132 B-2s were ordered, that number was eventually cut to just 21. To date, no B-2s have been retired from the Air Force or lost in combat, but one was lost in a crash as it was taking off from Anderson Air Force Base in Guam. Though the crew did eject safely, it became the single most expensive plane crash ever, at an estimated cost of $1.4 billion. In 1976, Jack Northrop contacted NASA to let them know of the research he had done in the 1940s and to give them the data he had collected about the flying wing so that it wouldn't be lost. 
Soon after, NASA wrote back and said that after re-evaluating wind tunnel data for a range of large aircraft designs, they could confirm his work and that the flying wing was indeed the most efficient design and load carrier. In 2015, NASA started research into how birds can fly and maneuver without vertical tails, using the aerodynamic theories of Ludwig Prandt and an unmanned flying wing glider, the Prandt D, with the intent to find new low drag aircraft designs, not only for here on Earth, but also for other thin atmosphere planets like Mars. Now, online security is one of the most important and worrying aspects of the internet today, and it's something which I take very seriously, which is why I use NordVPN. Now, part of my job entails a lot of research online, and sometimes I'm directed to websites that aren't always what they seem. And this is where you really need something to help you out before you fall into one of those traps. Using a VPN hides your computer's real IP address to make it much more difficult for hackers to gain access to any potential personal data like passwords, bank logins, etc. And now with NordVPN's new CyberSec security built right into the app itself, you'll also be protected from websites that are known to host things like phishing, malware, trackers and the like by blocking them before they can infect your computer. Now for Black Friday this year, if you go with the NordVPN three-year plan, you'll save not only 84%, but you'll also get four extra months for free and the new NordLocker file encryption app worth $312 or equivalent in your currency. Get all this by using the coupon code CuriousDroid of the address now shown and there's even a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no excuse for not trying it.